All right, take two. So let's move this black up and through here. Kind of blend that up. See how I lift it up and it blends. If you're not getting a nice blend, dip your brush in a little bit of water and dab it off on your palette and pull up. Same with over here. So I'm gonna let a hair of that white right there and it'll act as a reflection of the light off of his muzzle. Like maybe it's so black that it reflects a little white. Go back here and thin that paint out a little bit. That's the bad thing about acrylics. It, it, it can dry so quickly. I prefer oils for the nice blend that they give. But this portrait, pet portrait, came in just a little bit late. And they'd like it before Christmas. So I'm really out of options for that. It takes some, well, it takes weeks sometimes. It depends on how much, it depends on how much um, oil you'll use in your pet portrait in order for it to dry. But most of the time mine take a week or two. All right, so let's do the eyes. I'm gonna go brown first, dark brown. I'm gonna go back into my brown because all of this needs a second coat because you can see the white behind it. And I'm gonna blend into my black and let a little bit of that light gray I showed you earlier with the cream and the black. And I'm gonna take this medium brown, which is the primary color of this dog, dog, puppy dog. And fill this in. Kids, I'm not asking for you to perfect a picture. I just want you to try your best. And it's a nice memory you'll have. And your dog will love your picture. And your mom and your dad. All right, so I'm going to add some pink in here with this brown because I want to soften this color in between like this white and this pink and I'm going to stay on my brown because I'm pretty sure when I drew it out I had the measurements of the white all laid out but the pink or a flesh color with that brown softens your lines and you can highlight. 
that medium brown. I'm going to highlight up here at the ear. Even though it may not show it in your picture, you're going to have to decide, okay, where's the highlight hitting my dog? Like, where's the light and where is it going to fall? My dog. So since my light's coming from the right direction, I'm going to highlight that portion of my dog. I'm going to see the difference in the, whenever I use the flesh up here in between with the I know this mark right here makes the nose not look like it's even but that is the way the dog I have here is marked so I'm going to use a little more flesh tone and come up here and soften this down through here This needs to be highlighted through here, right here. See this? Turn your brush, give it a good practice prior. You see how I'm using the side of my brush a lot? I think, so we, we talked about reflective light before where light would come in on this side, hit the wall over here and reflect back so I think we need a bit of reflective light right there. And let's pop it on over here. And see the difference in the flesh and the just pure brown and white and how harsh it looks. So what we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna stay on the brown and we're gonna soften that with that flesh color and then we're gonna blend it in. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And maybe we'll hit it a little bit lighter right here. So now I need to soften this in here quite a bit actually. And these are folds in the skin, so I want to catch those. And then I'm going to go underneath this jawline with a little bit of the flesh to shadow. It needs shadowed. It can't just be stark white and the other. I am painting a little bit looser, kids, because um, this camera sits at kind of a funny angle to get in here and paint, sorry, paint looser so that you can see the full thing. I'm gonna work in that beige with the light up here to kind of highlight that. And over here. And this doggy has an eyebrow like that. Back to my flesh. So let's mix a bit of that beige with the flesh again. And let's get up around this nose and give it some shadows. I think it needs some here. Hit it right there very vaguely. I'm going to give these dark eyes another coat of dark brown because I can see some of that coming through while I wait for that to dry. I'm going to give it a little lash here. Look and see if I have anything else bleeding through. I guess I should have warned you, I jump around my paintings quite a bit. I don't stay in the same area. 
So this right here needs blended back in. See the flesh color? I wanna try and get it to blend as softly as possible. It's a very cute dog. I only forgot to put white on my palette. And again, guys, we're gonna stop at a point where it's 15 minutes to start a session three, which will likely be a lot of details. Where are we at right now? Yep, we have four minutes left. So in that four minutes, let's make a gray. And let's highlight some of that nose. We'll start there. So I made a nice light gray. And I'm going to highlight right here and right here. And like I said, don't give these nostrils like those full ovals or circles. Just kind of let your lines unfinished. If you'll let your lines unfinished, you'll see that you'll get a much better picture out of it. And now I'm mixing the gray in between with my white. Okay, see? See how the transition, that really light gray, blends in with the rest. So I'm gonna bring that around here. And even though it doesn't show it in the photograph, this should be right here, a little gray. And we're gonna jump down here next to our beige. He's got a couple wrinkles on his chest. We pull them up. right here again. So I know I post this on Facebook and on um, YouTube, but this lesson is uh, primarily for middle school children. And if you just start working at it, you will get there, guys. Touch it with white right there and there. I'm going to go with my white and I'm going to try and scrumble this in and soften this line. Highlight that septum and then start giving the ideal of, remember how they have those little whiskers all over here. And I think we need a highlight here. So notice how I'm not making black nostril holes. I am pretty much just highlighting halfway. You don't have to fill the whole thing. Okay. I'm gonna give it a whisker there. This one right here is a bit much, so I'll show you how to get rid of a mistake and then we'll start on series three. So I get a wet, clean brush and I just kind of scrumble it in and come down. And that's how I get rid of my mistakes. All right, I will be back with session three. Thank you.